Bobby, what's on your radar? Well, last week, Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh was dining at Morton's Steakhouse in Washington, D.C., one of my favorite restaurants. Now, according to Politico, pro-choice protesters showed up to the establishment and demanded that the manager eject Kavanaugh and ultimately forced the conservative justice to exit through a back door. Now, this came after progressive activist groups shut down D.C., tweeted out the tip that Kavanaugh had been spotted at the restaurant. The incident didn't attract very much notice until AOC tweeted about it on Friday. Poor guy, she tweeted sarcastically. He left before his souffle because he decided half the country should risk death if they have an ectopic pregnancy within the wrong state lines. It's all very unfair to him. The least they could do is let him eat cake. Now that last line was a reference to Marie Antoinette, the stereotypical out-of-touch French royal. So remember, though, that Marie Antoinette was eventually captured, subjected to a show trial, and murdered by far-left activists after they seized control of the French government. So maybe AOC should <laughs> watch it with that metaphor? But in any case, AOC's suggestion that the demise of Roe v. Wade means doctors can't deal with ectopic pregnancies, which is a pregnancy that threatens the life of the mother, well, that's just false. All of the restrictive abortion laws currently being enacted in the U.S. include carve-outs in the case that the abortion is medically necessary to save the life of the mother. Set that aside for a moment. In a follow-up tweet, AOC accused Republicans of pearl-clutching over the protesters who were targeting conservative Supreme Court justices. Quote, Republicans send people to protest me all the time, sometimes drunk and belligerent, wrote AOC. Nobody cares about it unless it's a Republican in a restaurant. Can someone please explain the obsession because I don't get it. Um, I, I don't agree that no one cares if that happens to AOC. And in fact, if she is being confronted in restaurants or having people show up to her home who are drunk and belligerent, uh, that's wrong and should be condemned and probably is being condemned by everyone in the mainstream media. In fact, I agree with her that some of the conservative criticism she receives borders on obsession and, frankly, harassment. Now, we have to be careful here because it's the public's right to hold political figures accountable and to engage in First Amendment protected protest even in the vicinity of their homes. But political figures should not fear for their safety, and that goes whether they are leftist Democrats or hard right Republicans. Right now, it's progressive pro-choice protesters who need to internalize that lesson. Shut Down DC, the group that initially tweeted out Kavanaugh's location, tweeted in response to the Morton's incident, quote, DC service industry workers, if you see Kavanaugh, Alito, Thomas, Gorsuch, Coney Barrett, or Roberts, DM us with the details. We'll Venmo you $50 for a confirmed sighting and $200 if they're still there 30 minutes after your message. That tweet didn't call for harassment or intimidation or violence, but it's still a little too similar for my taste to putting a bounty on a public figure. Now, Morton's put out the following statement after the Kavanaugh incident. So this is from Morton's The Steakhouse. Honorable Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh and all of our other patrons at the restaurant were unduly harassed by unruly uh, protesters while eating dinner at our Morton's restaurant. Politics, regardless of your side or view, should not trample the freedom at play of the right to congregate and eat dinner. There is a time and a place for everything. Disturbing the dinner of all of our customers was an act of selfishness and void of decency. In response, some pro-choice protesters have been flooding Morton's with fake reservations. Scott Crane, COO of Morton, sent the following memo to employees. Currently, we are experiencing a massive wave trending at number two on social media. Negative response to our comments yesterday, as well as being bombarded at the local level with phone calls and fake reservations on open table. I am making you aware of this because there's a good chance that your restaurant will also potentially have some people reaching out for comment and or making bogus reservations over the next few days. As I stated yesterday, our comment is always no comment. We don't respond. We don't retweet. We don't post on Instagram or Facebook. We don't do anything. We do not insert our political beliefs at any time, not with an employee, not with a fellow manager, most certainly not with a guest. I'd like to note that punishing Mortons for threatening a customer with decency does not in any way accomplish something positive for the pro-choice cause all these activists are doing is making life a little more difficult for Morton staff, managers, and yes, the waiters, the working class people. Do Democrats really wonder why they're losing touch with these voters when their strategy is to pester everyone at all times, unless you're 100% committed to progressive cultural values? Most normal people agree that there is a time and place for politics, but occasionally we should be able to disconnect and turn it off. It's healthier that way. 
given the intense partisan political disagreements in this country, for people to be able to work and dine and live their lives in private with constant political animus. Yes, I understand there's a lot at stake, but if you support abortion rights, the Supreme Court is not really your target. The Dobbs decision simply returned the issue to legislators at the national and state level. If you think abortion laws should be looser than they are or stricter than they are, then you have to mobilize a coalition and get people elected who support that view. Look at Glenn Youngkin, a moderate Republican who won the gubernatorial race in Virginia with a mandate to govern as a moderate Republican and is seeking to implement a 15-week abortion ban. That policy is actually more permissive of abortion than what the law is in France, where a 14-week abortion ban is in effect. Progressives often say that the U.S. should be more like Europe, but not like this, I guess. <laughs> So, Bacha, I, I wonder what you uh, think about this. Um, uh, probably you are also struck by the, uh, the call on you know, working people, on waiters, on staff to be not only doing their jobs, but to be vigilant in case a Supreme Court justice shows up. They're supposed to drop everything and report this to the liberal activist, <laughs> activist authorities who will do what? I guess they'll just harass and annoy people. Like, is this a good strategy? Don't the, the, the left, the activist left, and obviously there are crazy activists on the right who are causing all sorts of mayhem uh, frequently, so I'm not you know, trying to leave them out, but people just, I think most normal people get so tired of this and, and, and don't think that it is good in modern life to have people, even, even important political people who, yes, there should be accountability and yes, you should be able to protest them. I, I think even in the vicinity of their homes, I do, I'm not sure, I don't feel strongly about a lot of these laws trying to criminalize that either, but just that, come on, like in the restaurant, like there's not, it's not the right time and place for this kind of stuff. So I think um, what you're, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're making is a moral case and not a legal case. Absolutely. And, 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 and in that sense, I totally agree with you. But I think it's very important to separate those things out. From a moral point of view, I agree with you. There's something really distasteful about this. Justices are not supposed to be influenced by pressure from the public, unlike elected officials, right? right? They have lifetime appointments. They're meant to be impartial and only do one thing, which is decide whether or not something is constitutional. So this is just punishment for having a different view than these activists do, right? And there's something very distasteful about them wanting to, this is not activism because it has no goal in mind, right? The goal is only to punish the justice for having decided something against their political preferences. And that's it's distasteful. I totally agree with you. Politically, it's 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 crazy, right? <laughs> like it's so. It seems almost if if they were all plants by Republicans, they couldn't have done a better job, right? Of alienating uh -huh. average Americans from the position they want, right? But at the same time, I think it's very important to stress that from a legal point of view, these people are entitled to have their kind of gross uh, opinions, and they are entitled to stand in the street and make those opinions heard. And um, so I, I, you know, that is what makes. America great, I think, is that, you know, the majority of Americans can be like, God, that's so gross. But also because of our amazing constitution that doesn't have the word abortion in it, this is their mm -hmm. right to do that, to stand in the street and do that. Yep, absolutely. And I, I tried to be clear on the show that, you know, the various laws have been proposed in some places to, you know, criminalize protesting near the Supreme Court justices. Yeah, I, I, that's not I, that's not going to stand up. The, eventually, the Supreme Court would say that's not constitutional <laughs> would, be the, would be the irony because we have a very pro free speech, pro free expression um, Supreme Court right now, which it's a, a good thing that First Amendment jurisprudence has gotten even more robust. Um, so that you know, that's not what we want to see. If they need, if they need security, fine. You know, the bill to give them more security. We were debating that a little bit on the show, but I think there's not really much to debate there. What, whatever the appropriate security they need, right? That's fine. But uh, but it, it is, and I, I, you hit on something there that I think is key. And it, I know the, the justices are doing a lot of what appears to be legislative work. Um, be in, in part because the legislature has just kind of forfeited its responsibility to engage in the practice of making legislation, <laughs> but they so are lovely. still they are still judges. They are mm -hmm. ruling on uh, legal matters in a way akin to, you know, how it would be wrong to send you know like thugs to go int intimidate the judge at like a mobster's trial, right? It's not exactly like that, but it is a little bit different than. You know what AOC is saying. I get you know harassed, and I, I don't think she should be harassed. I, in in fact, I think a lot of that obsession with AOC is very unhealthy. Uh, but it, it 
I actually, there's probably a, a greater it's okay to challenge legislators uh, in public or than uh, morally, just from the moral standpoint. Again, not from the legal standpoint, because that's pretty clear in both cases. Yeah, and I also think that, you know, sort of standing outside a restaurant is very different than appearing outside somebody's private residence where their family lives. So I, I think that those are also morally and, and legally different um, because standing in the public sphere, in the public space when somebody has gone out into public is very different than coming to their home where their children are and, um, you right. know, protesting outside their home, especially because we know that Justice Kavanaugh did get that um, death threat. So those are very different as well, right. I think. Right, and he, right, and he had that, uh, right, he had a, a person visit his home with some yes, intention to yeah. do harm. So we do have to yeah. take this stuff seriously. Uh, but I'm looking forward to what's on your radar, Bacha, coming up next.